Hey guys, welcome to the first ever episode of WCW Nitro vs WWF Raw. So we're going to go back in time to 1995, September the 4th, 1995, where it was a simpler time. We had Bill Clinton as president, Toy Story, you know, Die Hard with a Vengeance, Bad Boys just came out. As well, we had some awesome TV shows like Doug, Animaniacs, and then the world of wrestling was changed forever when WCW Nitro aired for the first time at the Mall of America. Now that's all said and done, now that you were all prepared, let's hit the music and let's get on with the review. So we start off the show with the introduction of the commentating team. We had Eric Bischoff uh, before everyone realised he was running the show. Uh, we had Bobby the Brain Heenan, one of the best, not the best, but one of the best uh, colour commentators of all time in my opinion. He's just so good. Uh, first episode, he really just is one of the best guys to listen to in this. And then we had the introduction of Steve McMichaels on Mongo on commentating as well. The, the chemistry between Mongo and Heenan was really well put together. Uh, Eric Bishop was kind of like the middleman, keeping making sure everything continued going forward. But pretty much Heenan and Mongo were the two guys you kind of really wanted to listen to go at each other about the matches. Uh, I thought this was a great introduction. They talked about, they hinted at WWF, but they never actually mentioned their competition. They just said this is where the big boys play, and this is where it changes wrestling forever. I thought this was a fantastic opening, great way to introduce the uh, commentating team, and solid start so far. So for me, I can't really score it because it's just an introduction, but I thought it was very, very solid. Moving on to the first match of the night, it was Justin. Thunder Liger from New Japan. They announced New Japan's one of their biggest uh, superstars taking on uh, WCW's up and comer, uh, Brian, Flying Brian, or aka Brian Pillman. I thought this was awesome. It was cool to see Brian Pillman in this kind of early stage of his career in WCW. I know he had, uh, he would work in with Austin and stuff on uh, the original. But this is this was a great match, a solid opening match, and it was really interesting for me with um, Pillman and uh, Liger was that the chemistry was just there. They automatically knew how to work with each other, and they're pulling off moves which are still being used now by not just our cruiserweight division, but our high, uh, biggest names like AJ Styles are definitely influenced by these guys. You can see that. Um, Finn Balor as well, very much, uh, very much as well, being influenced by these guys. The match itself was hard, you know, really great. It was a great opening match. One of, I think, a very smart match having these two young, you know, young stars taking each other and showing what, you know, not just what the heavyweights can do, but you know, the cruiserweight division for WCW can do as well. Uh, it was a hard hitting match. Both men looked like they were about to take each other to the limit, which they did. And Pillman managed to get a switch on and to hold Liger down for the free count to get the victory. I'm gonna give this match a fantastic three out of five stars. I absolutely enjoyed it. And I think both men were just absolutely brilliant for an opening match for this new show. Next up, we had probably one of the most infamous sections on WCW for their opening bit. There's there's this bit and what you know as well what happened afterwards. Uh, it was a back it was back in the Mall of America. They're having all the fans, all these kids, and it's Pasta Mania, brother, because Ochamania needs to make pasta now. Um I thought it was great. As a kid I thought Hogan was you know, up there as one of the biggest superstars in the world, but you kind of forget about Pasta Mania until you see these episodes and you go, God, I can... You know, I know it was a venture which didn't last too long, but it was an interesting concept, you know, concept that Hulk Hogan was selling pasta, and he was asking all the kids, who's the greatest wrestler of them all, brother, brother, and they all shouting Hogan. Um, but yeah, really big advertisement for Hogan's 
restaurant, well, fast food restaurant at the Mall of America. But I just thought it was so cheesy, so awesome. I loved it. Next up, we had Ric Flair versus Sting for the WCW United States Championship match. Uh, this match, before it got started, we had the big reveal. Lex Luger had re-signed with WCW, came out, watched on like that, did the whole thing. And then he was escorted to the back by security. Uh, obviously, this was a massive pot for WCW. Uh, according to uh, stories, uh, Bischoff didn't want Luger to come back. Um, Sting convinced him to do it. Um, they managed to do it in a way that Luger had worked in a house show for WWF the night before. Didn't tell anyone he'd already signed a pre-contract with WCW. And then the next day, he was on WCW for their first show for Nitro. Big pop for them, big acquisition for the BCW in this way. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, the Rick versus Sting match, not one of their best matches, I won't lie, but this was a good match and it was one of those matches, you know these guys, they've worked with each other so much, they've got great chemistry, and Flair and Sting are two of the, in my opinion, one of the best rivalries in wrestling history and it will always go down as that even some of their work you know not some of their best matches like this one wasn't one of their best it was a good match is still more entertaining than some of the stuff we get with current wrestling but yeah the match ended in dq because Ann anderson who's had a bit of a feud with uh, rick flair got involved prevented rick from winning uh, he started beating down on rick flair and after that we had scott norton uh, get in front of Mongo and then we have the Macho Man very very much a lot going on on the plate after that so Sting retained his WCW US title uh, Ric Flair and uh, Anderson went off beating each other down in the crowd and Scott Norton from New Japan who just signed for WCW at the time got in front of Mongo's face which meant Macho Man Randy Savage came out, challenged him to a match that minute, but Eric Bischoff wasn't having any of it and stated that these two men will fight each other next week on the next episode of WCW Nitro. Uh, so for me, I really enjoyed this match. Uh, there was a lot going on at the end, but I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 stars because Rick versus Sting is still a classic match, even if it's not one of the best. We also had, back, uh, we had video packages from both Sabu and uh, Wall Street, this was aka the former IRS from WWF. Um, the Sabu, Sabu video package was terrible, uh, blurry, it was very stuck in the 90s, very much like you, you saw bits of that, but it was very, very blurry. Uh, the Wall, you know, Wall Street's promo was again generic to the time period of 1990s. But it was interesting to have these two video packages back to back from each other, and you know, it, you know, it's introducing new characters to the world of WCW. So I can't really complain, but I can't really score them because they are just video packages for new arrivals to WCW. Next up, we had uh, Big Bubba versus Hulk Hogan for the WCW Heavyweight Championship. Uh, this for me was a very traditional. Um, 90s wrestling main event. Um, you had uh, mid card, upper mid card heel versus obviously the big champion. Um, it was for me. It was it was it was simple. It was a simple match. Um, big Bubba, aka Big Boss Man, controlled the match at the start. Hogan using the power of the crowd got Hulkamania up and running. We had a leg drop. It's it's a traditional Hogan match for the you know opening match. Well, first episode of Nitro. He wins. Then the Dungeon of Doom come running in. They start attacking Hogan. He manages to fight him off. Then Lex Luger comes out as well. We have that classic scene where Lex and uh, Hogan's backs are at each other and they turn around and they're about to fight each other I mean all the rest of the baby faces come out to stop these two from fighting and then we have that classic promo where Hogan is asking why Luger is back in WCW and Luger goes I'm sick of working with kids I've come here to play with the big boys all this lot and states he will wait months, years if asked to, until he has an opportunity to take Hogan on 
for the WCW title. Hogan goes, you don't have to wait, brother. Shake my hand and we'll have a match next week. And Lex does, and we, it's official. Lex Luger versus Hulk Hogan for the WCW Heavyweight Championship next week on Nitro. Um, like I said, this was, it was, it was traditional 90s Hogan match. Uh, so I'm going to give this a 2.5 out of 5. It wasn't as good as the Sting match or the you know, Pillman Liger match, but it, you know, it got the crowd excited. It was the main reason at this time people would have tuned in for WCW. So, you know, I can't complain too much. And it's, sometimes it's good to watch the classics like this where, yes, it doesn't matter. You know Hogan's going to win. But it's still entertaining just to see that. I would go on about WWF's episode of Raw at this time, but we didn't get one. Um, I tried researching on why there wasn't an episode of Raw for the first ep episode of WCW either. And I found out that apparently USA Network was having a... They had a dog show one at the time. And a According to them, they just didn't. Re WWE decided not to air their episode, so that they wouldn't have to do, you know, compete with the dog show or something. I don't know, but yeah, this is the reason why WCW chose September the fourth as their premiere episode because they knew there wouldn't be any competition from WWF at the time. Very interesting. Really much stating this is how you know the competition was already starting between these two companies, and very smart from Eric Bischoff to choose the fourth especially when he knew that it wasn't going to be any competition for him. Um, so what am I going to score WCW versus WWF? WWF, WWF, WWF isn't going to get a score, it's non-score for them because they weren't on. Uh, WCW first episode of Nitro was actually really insane and it, it still holds up a little bit to this day and that's something you can always say is a good thing. Uh, so if it holds up and it's still entertaining, we should enjoy it. So I'm going to give WCW Monday Night Nitro a three out of five stars. I think it's a great start to the you know the Monday Night Wars. Uh, but what was your favourite part between you know WCW's Monday Night Nitro opening debut episode? Did you enjoy it as a kid, or have you ever seen it? If you haven't seen it check it out guys it's worth checking out on the network if you haven't uh, if you do like the content we make on here at smack talk wrestling please like subscribe and press that bell to keep notified with all our awesome content here if you want to follow the channel on twitter it's at smack talk youtube if you want to follow me on the old twitter it's at boise 88 and i'll see you guys next time on smack talk wrestling reviews